In this video, I want to discuss uh, the range of optimality and range of fe feasibility and show you how things change uh, when we look at the graphical um, solution of the problem. So I will use the same example of uh, product mix, uh, the Blue Ridge Hot Tubs problem, where we're maximizing a profit from producing two types of products subject to three types of constraints. Here is the model just as a refresher. And here you see the Excel model with the optimal solution 122.78 and the optimal profit of 66,100. So we have here the sensitivity report and I already added uh, something that we, we defined earlier in the other episodes, range of optimality and range of feasibility and I already have also the answer report. So first I just want to calculate, right, so the range of optimality obviously will be um, the the value of the objective coefficient minus allowable decrease. So the range of optimality is from 300 uh, to uh, 350 plus allowable increase, right? And this I can of course, um, oops, I can of course copy, right? And calculate also uh, the range of optimality for the second coefficient. And a similar actually calculation I can do for range of feasibility Right, so range of visibility here is uh, from the right hand side value 200 minus 26, which is the allowable dec decrease, and here plus 7 allowable increase. Right, so this is just the same information in a different format. Now, uh, what I want you to see is right, why did we call this range of optimality and range of visibility? Uh, so um, I will show you here a, a little demonstration where we see the graphical solution with all the parameters of the models shown here on the left and then we can change these parameters we can see how the optimal solution shown here and the total profit displayed here uh, changes when we uh, when we adjust certain parameters of the model so you see here currently the, the three constraints are highlighted i'm going to unhighlight them just so that we see the feasible region and this dotted line here is actually representing the profit um, level curve and the uh, right straight line which is achieving the $66,100 of profit and this is the only feasible solution that is on this line that's the optimal solution and now what I want you to see is right we know let's say for the first coefficient range of optimality as we saw here range of optimality is from 300 to 450 right so what happens when you increase the 350 um, let's start maybe from decreasing. When we decrease three, uh, 350 down to the lower limit, you see this this level curve is slightly rotating, right? The level curves change, but this is still remaining an optimal solution. We are now decreased by 35, decreased by 40, by 45, and then decreased by 50, which is the allowable decrease. But we are now at the lower limit, and you see all solutions here on this line, on this boundary, become optimal. This is the case of multiple optimal solutions. If we go beyond, the optimal solution changes and you see right this solution now achieves higher profit. That should also also show you right that if we look at the old optimal solution which was here, all right, it is actually achieving a lower uh, optimal or oh, sorry, lower profit. So that's why we said in the other videos that even though we know the optimal solution changes, we can use the value of the old optimal solution, the profit achieved, right, or the objective function value at this solution, we can use it as a lower bound because obviously it is underestimating now the, the optimal objective function value at this new optimal solution, right? And similarly, you see, if I go back uh, to 350, right, and I start increasing, right, remember, the upper range was 450, if I increase it up, 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 you see again the level curve is rotating until it becomes parallel to this constraint, right? The constraint on labor in this case, this was pumps, this is labor. And beyond it, right, the optimal solution changes. And again, the value achieved at this point is an underestimate, right? You see it would be on a lower level curve now um, than the, this value here, right? So this is the range of optimality. So right, the name comes from the fact that the, 
this is the range in which the optimal solution that we had originally remains optimal, right? The old optimal solution is still new optimal solution after we change this coefficient. Of course, similar analysis I could show you for the second coefficient, right? 3, 3 or 5, and so on. The same rotation happens, and we could see when the solution changes. Of course, these are jumps by $5 just for convenience, but of course you can change by any number, even fractional numbers. Okay, so this is the, the range of optimality. Now, range of feasibility, let's consider, let's say, again, the, the first constraint, right? So first thing to realize is that, right, if you recall, shadow prices indicated that this constraint and this constraint are binding, and this one is actually not binding because it does have a slack of 168 units, the difference between the left-hand side and the right-hand side. And if you look, actually, Excel has an answer report that shows you this information. So these are the three constraints, and it says this one is binding, this one is binding, this is non-binding with a slack 168. But in fact, it is also showing here the non-negativities as potentially binding or non-binding, right? So in this case, their slack is 128 and 70, 122 and 78. That's because these are actually variables. The variables have these values and the lower bounds are zero. The difference between values and the bounds is equal to the variable values and they are not binding, right? So you see um, all constraints, including the lower or upper limits on variables could potentially be binding, right? So we know now the first two constraints are binding Right? And then in the sensitivity report, let us consider first constraint number one. So if you recall, it has a, sh a shadow price 200 and allowable increase 726 was allowable decrease, right? So from 174 to 207, this constraint, this, um, um, this solution, the, the, why is it called, uh, the, sorry, the, the shadow price can be used to determine uh, the optimal objective function value. So why is it called the range of feasibility? Well, uh, let me actually now not show the profit level curve, but show the pump uh, constraint and also the labor constraint, right? So this is the optimal solution is now on the intersection of those two uh, boundary lines of those constraints. And what happens now if I start increasing the, um, the right-hand side of the pumps constraint? So Right? If I increase it by one, uh, the, this line, if you notice, it slightly moves. There's a bit of delay here. It slightly moves, right? So there is a change in the solution. But remember what we predicted because the shadow price is $200. The profit that was 66100 when I increase it by one becomes 66300 So here you see the increase in profit. But it is, of course, achieved by a change in the solution. And notice what happens. The solution was actually 120 to 78. 122 was decreased by 2, and this was increased by 3. And the net effect of this change is $200 more. So you see, we couldn't have seen this without somehow resolving the problem, right? Again, if I increase by one more uh, pump the right-hand side, again, the change is the same, right? So here on the left-hand side, there is decreased by 2. On the right-hand side, uh, sorry, on the next one, there is decreased by 2. Here, the next 2 increase by 3. And it goes on until I reach... 207. See, I'm gaining 200, 200, and 200, and finally the last 200 dollars I gained here. And then what happens afterwards? Right? I reach the solution 108.99, and then when I go on, nothing changes. The constraint moves. Right? It happens that in this case the pumps actually become a non-binding constraint. Right? So at this point, why is that? Because there is the third constraint, the tubing, that now becomes binding. And the optimal solution is now on the intersection of uh, one uh, a pair of constraints that is different. Still, the labor is labor constraint is binding, but now pumps is no longer binding. It's tubing that is now binding, right? And so the set of binding constraints changed. And also, if you think about the shadow price at this point, the shadow price is actually zero because let's say I increase the right hand side of the pumps. And no longer the profit, the profit no longer increases. So you could think about the shadow price as being zero. So you see, the first the shadow price was two hundred dollars, but after the limit it dropped. It didn't have to drop to zero immediately, but it, it, it always happens that the, the shadow price will be gradually decreasing until it becomes zero as we relax a constraint. Right. So this was a relaxation 
of a constraint in, in, a, in a case, of course, of maximization, right? So if I go the other way, and if I say, let me disable, so go back to 200. If I now say I'm decreasing, right? If you remember, the decrease was, allowable decrease was by 26, right? So the allowable increase, we went up to 7. The allowable decrease was 26, so we dropped to the value 174. And so if I start decreasing, again, the solution is moving. Actually, now it is it is decreasing uh, the x2 by 3 and decreasing this by um, by tier by 3 and decre increasing this by 2, right? 130.66, 132.63, and so on. And of course, I have to decrease this down to 174 to see some something interesting, right? So the, And then the profit is still dropping by $200 for every uh, one pump less, and when I go to 174, it happens that right, uh, something changes, right? What happens? Now, when I go from 174, profit is 60,900. 60, when I drop by one, the profit goes to 60,550, which is actually more than $200. This is now, right, a drop by $350. 900 minus 350 is 500. So, and then again, if I continue decreasing, it's again by 350, 350 less, 350 less, 350 less. And look what happens to the solution. Now x2 is fixed to zero, and x1 is dropping by one all the time. And they were actually losing this 350 for every one pump less. And again, what's a binding constraint? This one is no longer binding. Tubing is no longer binding. But there is a constraint that is not shown in here. Uh, explicitly, it's the non-negativity for x2. x2 is now zero, right, and it is on its lower limit. So now the two binding constraints at this point are the pumps and the non-negativity for the second variable for x2. So what you see here is that again, the set of binding constraints changed. So why the name range of feasibility? The name comes from the fact that we say that within the range that you see here, the same, um, the same um, a set of binding constraints remain binding. And therefore, uh, if you determine the solution as an intersection of those two constraints, so let's go back a little bit, right? So, so if you find the solution as an intersection of those two constraints, it is still uh, a feasible solution, right? When we, when we go down with this value below 170, Four, right? Where would be the intersection of the red and the, this this pinkish line here? It would be somewhere here, which would be negative x2. It would be infeasible, right? If we went uh, with this value back to 200, and we went up to 207, right? And then we take an intersection above the 207. We take an intersection again of the previously binding constraints. This solution would be again infeasible. Right, so the name range of feasibility comes from the fact that the intersection of the old binding constraint is still feasible as long as you change just one right hand side within the allowable increase and all the range of feasibility, allowable increase or decrease or range of feasibility. Right, you change within the range of feasibility, the same binding constraints are binding, and the solution determined by them is still feasible, and therefore it is still also optimal because. If you remember, right, the level curve is such that it will select this solution, right? So, so, um, so that is the explanation of range of feasibility. And what I want you to see also is that when the range of optimality is considered, or range of feasibility for both of those cases, um, in these ranges, what they, these ranges have in common is in fact that when you resolve the problem the set of binding constraints is the same, right? So we just said if you change the right-hand side above the range of feasibility, the set of binding constraints will change. Now, this is the optimal solution. The binding constraints is tubing, and its uh, labor and pump is no longer binding constraint. And if when we change this down, we said the set of binding constraints will change when you go below below the 174, which is the lower limit of the range of feasibility, right? The set of binding constraints now will be pumps, which we changed, and no longer the labor. It is now non-negativity for the second variable. So 
right? So you see when you go outside of the range, the set of binding constraints changes. And, um, and also what we can say is that, um, um, right, if, if, you, if you go back to 200 and we say what happens when I was changing the level curve coefficient, the profit coefficient, right, a 350, right, the set of binding constraints, which are they? They are pump and labor, right? But if I go with this outside of the range of optimality, then there are different binding constraints. Now, the labor and tubing is binding. So you see outside of the range of optimality, also the set of binding constraints changes, right? Uh, so with both what these ranges have in common is that within these ranges, the set of binding constraints is the same. In this case, we just change the coefficients. And in this case, we might be changing one of the or multiple right-hand sides of those constraints, but they are still the same constraints and they are binding. Um, and also what we can understand from this is that if the set of binding constraints is the same, uh, whenever you're outside of the range and uh, you still use the same solution on the same binding constraints, you can determine um, th that, that this solution now, right, when, you, when we go outside of the range, this old optimal solution, right, which is still feasible, is always a lower bound when we maximize. It's always a lower bound on the optimal objective function value. And in the case of changing the right-hand side, Let's go back to 350. When we change the right hand side and um, we change, let's say, the pump right hand side, we can say that, right, if I, let's say, increase the right hand side by 10, then the, the intersection would be here, but it is no longer feasible, so it kind of overestimates the profit, right? So adding the shadow price times 10 here to the optimal profit would give us um, a extra uh, extra what two thousand dollars right so it would be 68 100 but 68 100 is a value in this solution that is actually infeasible it's above the profit line it's slightly above here right maybe i'll increase it by 20 and you will see right the intersection now would be here and it is like on a higher level curve then it is actually achievable, right? So applying the shadow price for the whole change uh, when we're outside of the range of feasibility will always give us an upper bound on the optimal objective function value. So changes here outside of the range, it's a lower bound. Uh, changes here in the right-hand side outside of the range of feasibility, you always get an upper bound. Of course, this analysis is valid as long as the objective is maximization, which in this case, it is right. As long as we maximize, we, we get a lower bound or upper bound um, from this analysis whenever we exceed the range of optimality and the range of feasibility. So I hope this, um, this video clarifies some of the questions you may have had um, regarding, regarding what happens when you change uh, some of these parameters within the ranges and actually what's in common. So one thing, one last thing again to remember, just to repeat, Remember that whether it is a range of optimality or range of feasibility, right? This, these ranges tell us um, in, in what uh, range of changes of objective coefficients and right-hand sides, the same constraints will be binding, the same two constraints, in this case, will be the binding constraints.